So endometriosis is essentially when the tissue grows outside of the uterus. One in 10 women have it, it is crippling. It's like incredibly painful. You get like a lulling pain. And then um, when you orgasm, you get like stabbing, stabbing pains. Like I've vomited from pain. Um, oh my God. And things like it's been like that bad. Like I've literally almost passed out. My videos were blowing up and I was posting so many and I was burning out and I was growing and I was growing, but I was so, so internally unhappy. I was definitely like being pretty mean to myself and being I can myself imagine. Up. Um, and yeah, I have suffered from depression when I was younger and then I massively suffered from depression during that period as well. It's not about, you know, starting something to get the biggest Instagram following or starting something to have the best abs on there. Like now people are like, I want to grow, I want to grow. And it's like, well, that shouldn't be your main focus and goal because you're only going to drive yourself absolutely mad. Have better goals. Have like absolutely. more. Like my goal is to be able to help 10 women. Steph, <laughs> welcome to Millennial Mind. Thank you. Are you excited to be here? I am. A little bit first. nervous, apprehensive, but um, you yeah, don't need to be. I'm excited. I've seen all your YouTubes. There's no need to be nervous. I feel like my YouTubes, when people say that, I actually <laughs> feel like it's a safe space because I'm like, you see how quite strange I really can be. Whereas Instagram <laughs> and other things are way more polished, but like YouTube, I do feel like <laughs> is more. You eating your Joe and the Juice sandwiches. <sighs> got a little bit of an addiction. Okay. <laughs> so I'm very excited to have you here and to talk about you and your brands, your several brands, but I want to start with your journey into kind of like the fitness world. So tell me, what happened when you left school? So I left school um, and I don't know why the first thing that's just come into my he head is the Magaluf girls trip. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> Nothing to do with I, the fitness journey. I was just like, look, what did I do? Oh, so I school. I like, that was literally within the day. Yeah, so I left school. Went um, to Magaluf. Went to, went to Magaluf. It wasn't for me. And then I was a gappy actually for a little bit. Okay. Um, I didn't go into university straight away because for me, like everyone at school was like, you have to go to university. You have to like choose what you want to do. You have to know what you want to do. For me, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't have like a set mm. path. Mm -hmm. um, so went to work as a gappy at a school and I wanted to go traveling with one of my girlfriends. So um, went traveling with her, but yeah, I worked up until that point and then we went away for like three months. So then I did actually end up going to university um, okay. afterwards, purely because of the fact that I kind of felt a little bit peer pressured, I think, into mm. doing that from just everyone around me was doing it. And I think I was like, I don't know what I want to do. I, I might just want to go into work or like something right. like that. And everyone was like, no, 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 you have to. It's so great for X, Y, and Z. So then I actually ended up going to Nottingham Trent and I studied media. Okay. But I was only there for three months. Okay. Because um, I was there, again, not because I really wanted to be there. Mm. Um, and when I was there, I think I very quickly realized that I was going to be getting a degree from something that I wasn't that into so mm. I left after three months and actually when I gave in like my handed in my papers to say that I'm going to leave the woman at the desk that she said to me so I'm really proud of you and I was like oh, oh. And she was like because so many people go to university and they're doing something they don't want to do she's like this is a really hard decision that you've made and like a risk but like at least you're like staying true to yourself and not going with the norm. That's so nice. Which was lovely. I was like, oh my God, thanks. I wish you could tell my mum that. <laughs> Just say one more yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> Listen, I'm fine. Um, yeah, so then I left and then mm. I went straight into work. So I just worked in retail and then um, I worked in a school. Okay. Um, an all girls school and I was kind of, I was a lifeguard as well. So I was teaching like swimming lessons. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was, you know, like house parents. Yes. So sort of like a house parent. So I wake all the girls up in the morning, okay. like get them ready for the day. Everything That's cute. Like that. Do you know what? I I did I did love yeah. it. I loved it, but I again it was kind of just like a pit stop in between okay. me figuring out what I want to do and you know obviously in a point where I could earn money. It's interesting. Um, you say that your parents. You wish you'd that person told your parents that. So were they not supportive or were they in a bit of a shock? How? What was their reaction? Growing up, so I have dyslexia. So I've always been maybe like not gone the exact route which you should be in terms of, oh, you know, she really wants to do this. I was just like very sporty. Mm. Um, and my parents were like very supportive of me, like wanting to like play sport all the time. And then in terms of me learning, my, you know, my dad would always say, as long as you're doing 
your best. Like that's, that's nice. Um, so I was very, very lucky in terms of that. Obviously, they did question it. Yeah. Which any parent Normal. would. Yeah. Especially because I didn't tell them. Um, <laughs> so I think that was probably like a little bit of a shock. But also I think they know me and they know what I'm like. And me being in something that um, like I'm ultimately not going to enjoy and not going to mm. gain anything from. I've just gone to university, come out in no better position than going there in the first place. So I think having to explain that aspect. And also I think because I'd had that year out, I'd worked for myself. Mm -hmm. um, like I'd been away, the culture of everyone, like this excitement of people like just coming to uni and mm -hmm. things like that. I think I wasn't like resonating with Got it. with that as much as well. And I was like, I'm just, you know, it's, don't get me wrong, I definitely was drinking and did the freshers and everything, but yeah. the drinking culture, it's not um, it was, yeah, it's a lot. And it's like, Wasn't where, me, where am I going? Like in terms yeah. of like my life, like I'm yeah. just at the moment, I'm just getting drunk and playing sports on Wednesdays and having to go to these lectures, which I, you know, I'm not passionate about. It's very rare at that age to know what you want. I think it's very rare for people at any age to know what they want. Yeah. I don't think I know what I want. I would say that I'm in a position where I'm being a little bit, um, if I'm being completely honest, uh, I'm being a bit of a coward. Like, you are. I could leave my job now yeah. and do this full time, but I'm so scared. Like I could like, be like, I'm gonna put everything into this. Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna do what I love. And it's something that I really enjoy and something I think I'm good at, but I'm scared. Why were you not scared at 18? I think you need the fear in you a little bit as well. Mm. I think that's like, for you right now, it's like one of those things where, you, for me, it's like having that fear, like, right, like you have to make this massive step and you don't have that security. Right. But because you take that security away, you have to put everything into this, right? So you're going to put everything you've got into it rather mm -hmm. than having this excuse here. So that... I feel like I'm getting emotional. <laughs> I, feel like, no. I feel like I'm like, I need to do that. Like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think it's so... I think it's so true. And I think so many people watching and listening to this are probably in a position where they feel like, I hate my job. Like, I, I'm not good at it. Or like, I, hate, I don't want to go to university. And like, my parents are forcing me and all my friends are going and I feel it's the right path to do. And that's why I asked you at, at that age, how did you know? I think I've always been very, like my sister always comments, she's like, oh God, you, you're always so, oh, it'll be fine, mentality of, um, really? It'll, it'll be fine. I'm, I'm going to do it because I I don't like this. I'm going to try something new. And I just kind of don't overthink, which actually is funny because I was having a conversation earlier oh. about now how I'm the biggest overthinker. But I think at that age, I probably didn't... Yeah, I just kind of... Had a lot of self-belief. Um, yeah, I guess so a little bit. And I think as well because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had no idea. I didn't know what my path was. So I think not choosing a path of the like, not that into it anyway, like let's just see what else is out there. It wasn't as if, you know, it was like a really hard decision because like for you, it's a really hard decision because you're like, I've got this job and my security, but then I've got, you know, my podcast, which I'm doing, which is mm. incredible. So there's way more pressure there because your passion's there. Whereas right. I think with me at that age, I didn't have that necessary, that passion for oh. like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. So the risk wasn't, there. So, yeah, I understand um, what you're saying. So it was like, let me go for it because there's not an alternative yeah, that I can um, fall back on anyway. So let's just see, let's just get me out yes. there into the real world. Because I think that's so good for people to just, you 100%. know, just get working. Um, and yeah, get into the real world. Obviously, like very, very fortunate mm. position where I could also leave university and go back and stay with my parents. Yeah. yeah. So obviously there is that those factors at work as well that come into it hugely, which you know, mm. fortunate for, but then it's straight away, like I went out and worked and stuff. So then how did you get into the fitness journey? So I moved to London, I actually became a makeup artist. Okay. Um, Cause what I did then very quickly realize is that I love working with people and being around people. That's kind of, I'm way more creative. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's kind of what like makes me tick. So I started doing that and then I thought, I love the people aspect, uh, but I wasn't like, didn't like thrive off it enough. Right. Um, I think after having like multiple conversations again with my parents, like my sister's exes who were um, trainers as well, they were like, well, what's your, what's your talent? What's your thing? Like, what are you good at? Mm -hmm. And it was always sport. And it came back to like, what do you enjoy the most? And I was like, well, sport, I can't keep still. And so they were kind of giving me encouragement to 
sort of like start an Instagram okay. or something like that. So I was just like, do you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I love this attitude of like, let's just go for it and try. Yeah. And like not this fear of like, oh God, what if it doesn't work out? It's trying to just like, let's just see. Yeah. And let's just do it. Yeah. That's really rare. I do think, yeah, maybe it is a little bit. I think I did. If you're saying it to me now, I'm like, yeah, I guess I kind of am like that. I'm like, let's just do it. Let's just yeah. see. If it doesn't work, the worst thing that happens is that like it hasn't worked and we'll like try it something else. Um, That's amazing. So, yeah, so, but with this, I think for me, I had at this point, obviously, um, I'd been a nanny as well. So okay. I had tried like a lot of different things, which obviously all in turn like helped me. And then basically I started posting videos. Okay. Because obviously starting on Instagram at that time as well, it wasn't a huge thing that was done. What was the time period? Uh, the time period was, I think 2016, 2017. Okay, yeah. Um, and people were, but it was, people I saw were Americans and it wasn't very much in the UK. And I think I was still at a point where I was a bit conscious and I was like, oh God, people are gonna like judge me and think, what the mm. hell is she doing? She's posting these workout videos. She's posting selfies of herself. And I thought, well, okay, just posting selfies of myself. Okay, maybe that is a little bit cringe and embarrassing because there's nothing behind it. There's no mm -hmm. substance to it. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're going to post videos and do workout videos, I was like, well, there's substance to that because at the time I was like training with groups and people and I was like, well, they can see and I can say to other people yeah. while I'm actually doing these videos so that my clients can see them and have a workout to do it for themselves. So that was kind of like that for me, which I think helped me move forward and like keep being consistent with my Instagram um, because it's obviously like a purpose, the, right? So it's like, exactly. what's the purpose behind this rather than just posting pictures of yourself to get attention or whatever. Exactly, mm -hmm. which I think at the time, I couldn't see really anyone else who was giving information there. There's this one girl I followed and she, her body was incredible. Right. And I was like, this is great. Like you're showing me loads of selfies. I was like, but how? Yeah. Like, and why, like, what are you doing? So I think I tried to create like a value if anyone did land on my page they could at least take something away from it got it um and i think that's obviously something now like i try and keep consistent and hopefully people can take away now as well um and then i did notice one of my videos basically got like fifty thousand views which back then was um even huge. now it's huge and i was like okay so videos that's how i'm gonna potentially grow as well but obviously like starting my Instagram I did start it as a business move but not necessarily just to grow mm -hmm. it was more to if anyone saw me on Instagram you know if a, if a gym wanted to pick me up if you know clients etc cetera, etc cetera, because I was like tagging in places and things like that um, I also was reaching out to other influencers I on the way here, I remember there's a girl I reached out to, I think she had like 50,000 followers. Okay. Um, and I was like training her and wow. she'd like post me, but I wouldn't get any um, any anything back in terms of followers. Okay. But it was just about like getting my name out there a little bit and just trying to network. Uh, so I wow. continued to do that. And so just posting every day consistently. It's crazy. Cause I think back then people didn't really understand the value of social media. I feel like in the last three years, people have been like, you can make a lot of money and you can start any business you want on social media. Yeah. But back then, I don't think there was that much awareness around it. I feel like, you know, I was just posting a picture of me in the park being like, hashtag daisies. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like that, that was my Instagram back oh, then. The hashtags. But yeah. it's crazy to me that you had this like business acumen and you had this like drive and hustle to like, Make you, you you're saying that you chose it as a you chose Instagram as like a business move. Yeah. Why did you think it was a business move back in like 2016? Because it was a way to be seen. Right. And in myself, I think I knew that if you know someone come across to me and meet me, and you know then they could see something in me, and I would get a potential job somewhere or something like that. Because obviously, in terms of what my qualifications were in terms of getting like a nine to five job, which mm -hmm. is what I tried and absolutely hated. I wasn't maybe regarded as high, but in terms of helping someone or just being able to have that initial conversation with someone, I thought if I can be seen, right. um, then I will be heard. So I think that's I kind that. of, yeah. And what did you do differently? Because obviously this, the fitness space now is is so saturated. Yeah. And what did you do differently then? And what do you do differently now? 
Apart from having the best abs in the whole world, by no, the way, which yeah. I really want you to get up and flash everyone so no, they can see. <laughs> Don't no. worry, I'll just put a picture of your oh, abs, abs right here. <laughs> no, honestly, you should see some of our new uh, trainers that we've got coming to the app. Okay. But anyway, I'll, right, that okay. is, uh, I thought you meant trainers, trainers. No, I was like, like wow. trainers with abs on. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, new regular trainers. Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily about what I've done differently there. And I think it's more about what I did do. Okay. Um, and it's probably a very similar pattern with a lot of people, like what you were saying earlier, just about being consistent. Um, mm -hmm. And I think being consistent with something is so important because if I just stop posting, then obviously it's not going to work. Right. It's not about necessarily, you know, starting something to get the biggest Instagram following or starting something to have the best abs on there or starting something. It's about starting it because something will come from it. Right. So it's not necessarily the, like, you have this massive goal here. It's just knowing that if you continue to do something, like something positive is going to come mm. from it, especially if you enjoy it, because someone or something, you're going to have similar values, similar goals within that and then that's going to start a conversation somewhere else and so true um so i think it's rather than like now people are like i want to grow i want to grow and it's like well that shouldn't be your main focus and goal because you're only going to drive yourself absolutely mad right. um and also like have more have better goals have like absolutely. more like my goal is to be able to help 10 women right or you know my goal is to whatever that person's goal might be, because mm -hmm. then that's just going to be a lot more realistic and make you feel better as well, I think, internally. Definitely. And I think that, like you said, when you have one goal, so for me, mine was to start a podcast. Yeah. And everyone, when I started, was like, you're never going to make any money from that. Like, mm -hmm. why are you doing it? And the amount of opportunities that I have got from it, yeah. I and some of them I just never thought I'd go down on. Like, I, I never thought I would go down that route. Yeah. Like it's not, and it's not been something that I've been chasing. I never started this podcast to make money. I didn't even know that you could make money from it. Yeah. Now I know that you can get sponsors and partners, whatever. Of course, that's my goal now, but it's not my only goal. It's not no. the reason why I'm doing it. No. I'm losing money at the moment doing yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when when people say like you should do everything with like to monetize on everything, it's like yeah, with time you can, but do stick to kind of like your values first. Stick to like your purpose yeah. first. And um, and like well, like you have, and like you said, you right. realize that you know you're meeting people and money's coming in because you're exactly. ultimately like sticking to your values exactly and keeping that close to you rather than going, oh, I'm well, I'm going to make all the most money and that that because exactly. if you lose sight of what well, you're really doing yeah. it, then I think that can blur the lines a little bit. And also, you know, you can that you can become very fixated with numbers. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Somebody shared my post when I came back from LA with Stephen Bartlett and he downloaded my podcast from YouTube and he made it into a reel. And I thought, oh my God, someone has taken the time out of their day to do that for me. And uh, somebody said to me, you know, if you pay some like accounts, like $50, you could reach more. And I was like, why would I pay someone? Someone's just done that of their own time. And I don't want my story to be like Shivani paid an account to, no. to get there quicker. Like no. I'm not, I'm in no rush, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I'm okay with growing slowly. Like yeah. I'm completely fine with it. Um, and he was like, it's about the destination, not the journey. And I was like, oh my God, no, you didn't just say that. No. And I was like, it's absolutely not about the destination. Because it's always moving the destination as well. Exactly. Your journey is always changing. And once you hit one goal, you feel almost like you need another goal. It's not just about having one. You know, Gary v even said this, like when he when he's able to buy the Mets, I think that's one of his goals. He was like, I would be so upset because a lot of people, when they reach their goal, they don't know what to do with their lives. Mm -hmm. What do you do at that point? So you always have to have like a moving post. But going back to what you were saying about posting consistently and knowing that you had to post every day. I think a lot of people struggle at the moment when they're starting a business with burnout. Mm -hmm. So you have to post every day. It has to be aesthetic. It has to look right. You have to have, you know, the best photos. Do you still struggle with that now? And what's your advice to people who want to grow, yeah. but they're struggling to be consistent? So when I first started Instagram, I was posting purely fitness and I was posting f purely then for a while videos because my videos were blowing up and right. I was posting so many and I was burning out and I was growing and I was growing, but I was so, so internally unhappy. Right. And I was like, what is this all about? I'm just, and that burnout. Yeah. And you're, you know, you're getting comments from people and, you know, they're wanting more and more. And, <laughs> which is, you know, obviously I've got so many incredible opportunities um, 
and things. But then I was like, what, why am I doing this? And I had to step back from it. And it was also when I got a similar timing to when I got diagnosed with endometriosis. So I was also like not well. Right. Um, and then on top of that, just, yeah, the burnout of, I mean, I was posting like two, I mean, I wasn't working out myself, but I felt so inclined, had to go and get those workout videos and create workouts for other people to do at home and mm. create the best, you know, the best circuit, you know, create the best combo. And I think that 100% was a, yeah, a big burnout for me. And then I basically started posting what I enjoyed as well, because mm -hmm. fitness, the reason I started it is because I love it. I play sports since I was, since I can remember. Right. Um, so for me, it's just an absolute love. Mm -hmm. I will any you know we just got in the post today two new bat and balls for our holiday okay like me and Alex, exciting. my husband we literally on holiday we'll like play so much sport together and so i so. you know i do i do enjoy it so i i lost that um so then i started posting more fashion and lifestyle okay. and other things because like i said i was a makeup artist i love fashion mm. so i wanted to start posting things that i'm enjoying which i knew would make me lose followers right like I knew that and okay. as I started doing that I was losing followers but my happiness and my mental health my sanity I was like it doesn't matter about the numbers because the people that I do have here really believe in what I'm saying and I can mm. help them in ways and you know something I always say is that you know fitness is you know my lifestyle it's not my life so for me to Why? just be posting just workout videos and you know just like giving that having that culture that I'm working out every day and things mm. like that which just wasn't the case um that definitely helped me because yeah like I said even though I was losing followers I gained so much more again in myself I love um, that um so that's so powerful when I I used to do a bit of modeling and when I did I used to start that, like posting pictures of myself all the time and I felt like it's just not me like it's yeah. just not who I am yeah and as I was posting it I was gaining followers and this was like when I was younger. And at one point I was like, why am I doing this? Like, for what reason? Yeah. This isn't making me happy and it's not who I am. I'm almost making myself grow on Instagram, but I'm not being, it's not reflective on me. No. And like, I know right now if I post a picture on my bikini, it'll get 10,000 more likes in a podcast. Like, yeah. well, not 10,000, let's be real. <laughs> but you know, it'll get a lot, hundreds more likes than, yeah. it, than it would of a podcast. But that isn't me. So I'm not gonna keep on doing that. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's really important that you realize in that moment, okay, this is about fitness, but what also makes me happy are yeah. X, 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 and X. And I'm gonna share that too, even though you'll lose followers, you're yeah. staying true to who you are. 100%. One thing you spoke about as well is creating workouts for people to do at home. Before the pandemic, were people doing that? I mean, the pandemic has definitely given home workouts a huge boost. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I had um, an app and guides for both gym and home. Wow. Um, so yeah, people were 100% just working out in their living rooms and stuff. I mean, I personally absolutely love a home workout. Really? Um, yeah, it's just like time efficient. We'll do what now? No, I'm joking. Let's squat. I don't want to. <laughs> no, oh, um, absolutely not. So when the pandemic hit, tell me about your growth then. So I started doing live workouts on my Instagram. Um, did you want some? Did you? Did you do any of the ones with Harry? With, you did some with Alex as well, no? I did some with Alex yeah. as well. I did some with him. Yeah. Who's Harry? Harry Akins. He's the... No. Um, yeah, so I like collaborated with him. Okay. And that was savage because he's an Olympian oh, and super gosh. competitive. And I'm not an Olympian, but very competitive. <laughs> so the fitness levels and I was we were, like trying to keep up and right. it was really, really fun. So that it was amazing. But yeah, that was only a couple. I did do them sort of five days a week throughout the whole wow. pandemic, which... It was for my sanity as well. It was incredible to have that community mm. and, you know, interact with everyone after the live. I could send people like voice notes. They'd be sending me voice notes. Um, so that was incredible. And it's just amazing to give people the confidence as well, which yeah. I do think the pandemic did in terms of, I don't want to go to the gym because they don't know what to do. But if you're working out at home and you establish enough knowledge and how to move your body and what you're doing at home i think that does give people the confidence to then step into the gym definitely um so yeah no it, it definitely spiked my growth as well obviously doing the uh live workouts 50 cent actually followed me over lockdown oh I mean, maybe he was joining my lives he's, unfo he's unfollowed now oh I know. i've got to bring the lives back for him okay fine we'll do one um, <laughs> maybe he'll join you after this podcast yeah maybe <laughs> but um Let's maybe he'll follow me too <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. I don't know why I said that. So, um, <laughs> so you wanted to start the app. Sorry, 
Did you have an app before, did you say? So I did have an app before, but it was where I plugged into uh, someone else's framework. Okay. So it wasn't, you know, they already had it and then it was just like my content going in. Um, and with that, I wasn't able to evolve it in the way that I wanted to, me and my husband wanted to. We want to evolve it more, make it global, um, right. build a real team around it, which again, is what you said earlier, take a step back hugely in terms of like finance and stuff. But, you know, it's so now that I've done it and we have an incredible team around us, like the reward from doing that and taking that risk of like starting something from scratch yourself, which mm -hmm. we actually also did start doing over lockdown. Okay. Um, yeah, so we found app developers, which is a process in itself. Yeah, well, it kept us busy yeah. as well, because it's a lot, especially when you're building it from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, but it's incredible because you get to have full say over design, how the layout is, and just the, like make it as user-friendly as possible. Because obviously with apps, they can be quite clunky. Yeah. And that is just like my biggest aim is not to be clunky. And that's what everyone says. They're like, they love how fluent the, the app is now and like the aesthetics of it. Okay. Um, because of, I love like, aesthetics and I think it's so Instagram important feed. to I don't at the moment it's terrible because we've been or oh no it is are you joking no it's I'm having a okay. it's terrible you but that's need to kind. refurb mine okay <laughs> that's your job no, I, I love I love doing it okay um, great you're hired <laughs> so yeah the app's obviously user friendly um super aesthetic and that's you know what it was so amazing to be able to create something which can be tailored to how we like it mm. and also to be able to tailor it how my community wants it. Right. Because obviously that is the most incredible thing is that I get to speak to my community every single day. That's so nice. And hear what they what they want next or Steph, can you do it a bit more like this? Or I'm not sure about X. And so to be able to have that communication with them and actually mm -hmm. build something for the user from a user's perspective is, I mean. That's amazing. That's, amazing yeah and loads of and one of your videos you said loads of people ask how you stay consistent and one of the things that I love that you say is just do something every day you don't need to do a half an hour hit workout every day you don't need to go for a 10k run every day no and that's what your app does right you have different levels of workouts on there yeah so basically we say that we have the answer to all your excuses okay um because like no matter the mood or time limit there is something there. So for example, there's, you know, like a 20 minute body weight, 15 minute, we have Mara, who is absolutely incredible, who is a yoga instructor. So we've okay. just launched with her. She's this Italian, Ooh. full of energy, absolutely amazing. I'm so bad at yoga. I need so to join. I. I'm terrible. Really? I, I'm, I find it so hard to focus, to Same. concentrate. Yeah. I'm literally just like, my mind just wanders. The other day I got like a meditation bead thing, like a, like a mala. And I tried to do it. And on the third bead, I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I was like, why? Right, I've done it. I've done three beads. So Mara does like 10 minutes as well. So she'll do, she'll do obviously her full flows. Right. But she does like, you know, it'll be like a shoulder opener or like de-stress or something like very. Okay. So maybe, you know, the beads didn't work out. Maybe try, <laughs> try Let's 10 minutes. Let's see if minutes. I can do 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, because it does, honestly, so for me, that's what, that's how I use it because... I find it incredibly hard and mm -hmm. time to sit and, you know, do a 45 minute yoga session. Um, but yeah, we also obviously have guided gym and home. Wow. And if you want to do like two days a week, three day, four days, there's specific, specific guides. Great word. Um, for that as well. So it is just kind of, and again, if you don't want to do a guide and you just want to ad hoc and say today, I just want to do a 10 minute challenge. Okay. Um, you can just go into the app and pick that. Do you promise I'll get your apps? <laughs> you should you should have a workout on that i promise you do this for, no do so this that's for something i've days. always been very like upfront about is okay. that you can like hear my workouts and hear like tailored plans etc but you're we're never gonna look the same no um like you're never gonna have you know i'm never gonna be tall mm. you know so it's like the same principle it's like we're never gonna have the when we have totally different genetic makeup. So like you can strive to be your best self and I hope that I can help you get there and inspire you in ways to give you a nudge, but we're never gonna look the same. And you know, even if you've, you know, the shape of people abs, for example, they're, they're all different. It's, so true. So it's, um, I've never said, do this and you'll get this. Right. Um, because I mean, again, like you said, or you could post your bikini picture and you'd get 10,000 likes. I could say, you know, hey guys, do this workout, get my abs. 
Fine. And that would, you know, that yeah. that would probably go off more. But that's the principle of that is so fundamentally wrong and that's not helping anyone. So, you know, and long term, you're going to lose the trust in people because they're going to they're going to do that. And they're going, Steph, I, I, what, you know, I haven't got your exact abs. Mm. So I think it's like, you know, having that community who you like you trust each other and you're just there to like all build each other up is like very important. I wanted to talk to you about endometriosis yes. and polycystic ovary yes. syndrome is that if I said it right yes tell me about it what is it so endometriosis is essentially when the tissue grows outside of the uterus um I mean I guess that sounds <laughs> anyone listening to it like, like what, is what does it? that but mean yeah one in ten women have it okay. um people say who don't have it are like oh it's just like a painful period it's nothing like that really <laughs> it is it's it's not about periods it is crippling um, I mean, I had an operation uh, maybe like a year or so after I was diagnosed. So the symptoms that I personally suffered with, um, I had bad skin. You basically get like stabbing pains in your stomach. And then like during sex as well, um, it's like incredibly painful. You get like a lulling pain. And then um, when you orgasm, you get like stabbing, stabbing pains. Like I've vomited from um, pain. Um, oh my God. And things like it's been like that bad. Like I've literally almost passed out. Just walking down the street, like curl, curdle up, just like in agony. Um, this isn't to feel sorry for me. No, but um, I didn't so know many this. women get it so much worse than than I do than I did as well. Um, but having the operation for me was really good. And then I had the um, coil put in. Okay. Um, which did help. But again, it's uh, exercise and nutrition helps it massively, hundred uh, percent. And I, I think I wasn't. I was. It makes you so incredibly tired as well. Um, wow. And obviously when you're tired, you like grab for sugar of and things course. like that. So I also at the time, I definitely didn't think I was helping myself. And then after the operation, I was like, right, I need to reevaluate. I need to actually like put time into myself and look after myself properly, uh, nutrition and exercise, which is why I say like, you know, it's so important to have something for everyone, like not super high impact. And cause mm. I, you know, I, I started walking loads um, I started doing lower impacts and that I really felt I don't lift as heavy, okay. you know, because for me that wasn't making me feel good. And just because people are saying, oh, you have to do this. It's, no, you don't if it's not making you feel good. And obviously, yeah, diet and stuff is obviously massively beneficial to, you know, not just if you have endometriosis, so many different things. And how did you deal with that while you're growing your app and while you're doing these <coughs> workouts? Yeah, it was... It was so you only had an operation last year, right? No, I had an operation in 2018. Okay, so you had it like four years so ago. So quite okay. a while ago. So that was kind of when I was, my account was blowing up as well, like yeah. I mentioned earlier. Yeah, it was quite a difficult time because you have all this pressure from like the outside world as well to like look a type of way and I, I'd gained weight um, wow. and things like that. So I, I was definitely like being pretty mean to myself and being I myself imagine. up. Um, and yeah, I have suffered from depression when I was younger and then I massively suffered from depression during that period as well, like very low. Um, so mm. it, it's it's like any illness or anything, it's like hard, but I had to have a very real conversation with myself and say like, are you actually helping yourself in right. what you're doing and your actions? Um, so that's when I kind of really started to look after my health. When you noticed you were suffering in that time, how did you react? So you know, what you said you'd gain weight and you had a certain expectation to look a certain way online. I can imagine you still probably have that today. Because mm. if I look at your feed, you know, you have an incredible body. And do you feel like if you put on weight or you change that, then people will criticize you? Yeah, I think there's 100% that hangs over your head a little mm. bit. Um, like just any general criticism from anyone, but it doesn't necessarily, you know, it's been about on the same day, I've had someone say to me, you look way too skinny and your thighs are so huge. You're too muscular. I've had like people say like polar opposite things in, in the same day. So I think it's just like having to have those conversations with yourself that it's people are always going to like criticize and try not to listen to it. But obviously sometimes, you know, it's like someone can say a hundred nice things and one mean thing. You can't help it. You know, you're going to listen. Mm. But I think it's also surrounding yourself with people who are going like, to uplift you like I have an amazing team my husband they're all very, very supportive. supportive but yeah I definitely have days where I have like low self-esteem but I think that anyone absolutely um and I think if people are saying nasty things online and fueling that 
Um, but again, I think I've got such a nice community. I'm very lucky. Really? Um, I get very, I mean, touch wood. No one come for me now. Um, I get very minimal hate. That's um, great. But I don't respond to it either. Ah, so and you, I, think, I used to in the beginning. Yeah. I, I've, I ignore it now. And then they just leave you because all they want is a reaction. It's yeah, on them, not you. So it's true. Like, just let them be. And if they want to. Sometimes people just say so such stupid things that I'm like, oh, yeah. I just have to reply. But it's, you know, I, th I think probably you're saying now that you're a lot stronger. You have a huge community. You have 1.6 million followers on Instagram, which is crazy. Mm. When you were younger and you were growing, when people would say negative things, how did you deal with it? And what would you say to people at the moment who f fixate on those negative comments? It's tough because it's so incredibly hard to alter your mindset. But I think something that I did start doing, actually, especially in lockdown, is practice, like, it sounds so, like, cringe and stuff, but, like, gratitude. So, like, they're saying something which is... Ne negative about you know like for me it's always been like oh my god your thighs are like so thick and things like that mm -hmm. and it's like well yeah but do you know what these thighs have done uh -huh. do you know what I mean like they carry me around every day like I played hockey for like my whole life and yeah. like it's you have to say you know like nice to yourself in that way and it's really hard to start with to start saying these nice things to yourself and mm -hmm. practicing gratitude like in the morning like god I'm so lucky that I can wake up and just like have whatever it might be, your morning coffee mm. or things like that. And um, to try not to just like over overthink and obsess about your body. Right. Um, Isn't that hard though, in the industry that you're in? I mean, I, I'm i encouraging people to move their body, to feel good and yes, get results. But for me, I am my most fo focused, most productive happy and nicer when I'm exercising. Right. Um, and I think that is something that, like, especially like, I'm in my community and they all kind of say and feel it's not necessarily about um, the shape or, Got it. you know, X, Y of your body. Um, mm. But yeah, no, I mean, anyone who's, you know, going through it, obviously like speak to people around you about it. And I think if you're, you've got to think, are you looking at someone and, being negative about someone's body because if you are then you're a pretty nasty person so you've got to think that you've got to have hope in people that most people are actually pretty decent mm. and that it's just the odd few trolls and they are always the loudest and the most unhappy and the most unhappy so um, and often when you're criticizing somebody else whatever that may be for whether that's their body whether that's their mindset whether that's their speech it's probably because you have an insecurity about it yeah, 100%. And so you want to put it on them. 100%. So if I'm saying, oh, this person's too skinny or this person's too fat, yeah. it's probably because I have an insecurity in myself. About something. Exactly. And it's so easy to say that to people, isn't it? Oh, they're probably angry. Oh, they're probably jealous and all of that. Um, but I think you just have to, like, do a little bit of work on yourself. And like I said mm. earlier, after my endometriosis, I actually thought, am I doing everything for myself to make myself feel my best and be my best self? And I think you have to have those conversations with yourself. And if you are doing everything and you've, content and happy in yourself I mean you don't have to like love your body right. do you know what I mean it's yeah. not like you just have to have that like acceptance in yourself and just like this is me we're fine we don't have to be like looking in the mirror every morning and go oh my god <laughs> you know it's kind of just like wake up go yeah um and not be so critical yeah you're gonna love the performance plan I've given you I designed a performance planner did you and every morning you write down your gratitude okay your affirmations and then you reflect I love that. So you're going to love it. That's Because stuff like that. So during the um, lockdown, I did a 66, or was it just after lockdown, a day challenge, which was within my app. And it was like a different kind of movement every day. And I said, before the workout, I want you guys to write down how you're feeling. Nice. And then after the workout, I want you to write down how you're feeling. Because it's just like acknowledging that shift of emotion. Mm. And I think when you write it down and you acknowledge it, it's like very powerful. Like you just said, 100%. just like just writing it down. It down. Yeah. And someone once said to me, you never regret doing a workout. Yeah. You'll never regret it. You'll never be like, I wish I didn't do that. No. You'll be like, that was hard. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna I, say, it was difficult. Like, oh, yeah. But I'm going to be sick. But you'll yeah. never say, I just wish I didn't. I just no. wish I stayed in bed and I didn't get up and no, do it. Never. Because it just makes you feel so good. It does. Yeah. 100%. So as, as, as well as the app, you have another brand. Yes. Sefi. Sefi. Tell me about it. So Sefi... Um, was founded just before Christmas. 
And it's an activewear brand, um, but I basically, I've always, as I've mentioned before, I've always played sport. Mm -hmm. And with my figure, I've always found it challenging to like find something that's performance based and also super stylish and chic and minimal and kind of can go into like my capsule wardrobe. Okay. If I wanted to find something that was really cute, it would not sustain the gym or my workouts. Right. Um, so I saw a massive gap for that, um, which is why I created Sefi. I want every color um, of everything. We're gonna get you in the green. It's literally so nice. Thank you. I love it. It's like like you said, I think when you, you have to choose, do you want something that's gonna be sustainable in the gym and that's gonna be, you're gonna be able to work out in or yeah. do you want something really sexy and really nice? Yeah. And you've basically merged the both, yeah, merged exactly. the two. It's really exciting. Why choose? Yeah. So the first drop that we did was very much, like I said, like capsule wardrobe, mm -hmm. um, colors that will go with everything, like tonal, mm. um, beautiful greens, browns. Um, and then we've just, just dropped a brand new set, which is like a very orangey, I want to say bright it. orange, so um, nice. but yeah, sunstone, which is what we called it. Um, and then a kind of like a sage green, which we called it serpentine. serpentine. Um, and yeah, so we've just dropped that as well. And then at the moment I'm actually, so that's drop three and we're already looking at like drop eight. Wow. So it's very, you have to be very uh, like ahead and it's constantly moving. So for example, with Sefi, one of my main things is to obviously make women feel like confident and comfortable. And for me, and I touched on this about like my thighs and people used to like tease me about my thighs and stuff with shorts. I never wanted to wear shorts and so many women do not feel comfortable wearing shorts. Mm. So I wanted to create shorts that all women like feel that they can wear <clears throat> and feel comfortable and good in. And I had the Sefi pop up and it was just incredible to see women come out of the changing rooms and they were like, oh my God, like, so I've nice. never been able to wear shorts. Like, oh my God, I finally feel like I'm able to wear shorts in the gym, they don't dig in and all these mm. incredible things. And now that I'm getting like more and more feedback from obviously the brand being out for just over six months, the feedback's always about, oh, I feel like I can actually wear this now. I'm feeling good. And I, you know, it's that messaging and that for me is just like incredible. And I think obviously the shorts have a special place in my heart Yeah. Um, because of me feeling like I could never wear shorts. That's amazing that as a brand, you've created something that people feel that they can now be themselves or now yeah. they can do what they want to do rather than having to conform to another brand where they don't really feel comfortable. Yeah, and then exactly. they don't like a part of their body because of it. Right. That's insane. Yeah. So it's amazing. Thank you. And how do you manage your time between the app, the brand, and obviously everything else you do? Yeah, so that can be challenging sometimes, but I think it's just like, for me, very important to have like my morning routine down, like get my okay. workout done early. Time blocking, like some days obviously are gonna be- I love the performance planet. Yeah. It's got time blocking in it too. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the time. <laughs> that start using that in the morning. But yeah. Things like that does help, like lifts. Um, and I think just, yeah, some days it's gonna be more on Cephi, some days it's gonna be more on We Glow. Okay. Um, and you've got to be like reactive to certain things and try and time things, which can be very difficult sometimes with mm. having like a big launch with Cephi and then also like launching a new guide with like We Glow. Of course. Um, to try not to make them go at the same time, although sometimes it, it happens because, you know, life. Yeah. Um, but obviously as well, I have an amazing team around me. Yeah. Um, and that obviously is a huge, huge help. Um, and everyone's like very like-minded and mm -hmm. have like very similar visions. So it's very important to surround yourself with um, people who have, yeah, similar visions. Oh God, I couldn't agree more. I think since I started surrounding myself with a particular group of people, my mindset has just completely changed in yeah. terms of what I want. And my confidence has grown so much because instead of people being like, mm, I don't know if you should do that or like, yeah, that was good. To mm -hmm. being like, you were amazing. Like, yeah. that's great. I'm so proud of you. Such a big difference. Someone said recently about um, drainers and radiators. You need to be around radiators. People Love who that. like, you leave and you feel like, oh. Uplifted. Uplifted, exactly. Yeah. And I'm like a complete extrovert. So I really take in people's energy. So now if I don't feel good energy, I'm just like, nope. Yeah. Not seeing oh. you again. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Which you've got to you've got to be like that. But some people don't understand it. Some people are like, what do you mean? They drain your energy. I'm like, I just know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know in my gut when I walk away and yeah. I feel crap. Exactly. Which we don't need. For sure. I've loved this conversation with you. I feel like you're very you're just so confident. I think you're just someone who's just like, I'm just not scared of failure. And I think as millennials, 
loads of people need to hear that and loads of people are going to be so inspired by your journey oh, but we have a, a closing tradition on this podcast hey okay. truth or dare okay i pick truth what's your biggest insecurity probably not being good enough really which is very interesting because what you just said about me being like confident in things i am constantly in talks with myself like this needs to be like i'm it's weird i'm i'm maybe a little bit of a perfectionist not in yeah. my tidiness but in yeah how i work and people like around me i was like i'm thinking that or like not being enough but i think that stems back to being dyslexic at school and not having um like the 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 norm in terms of a career path mm. um and people always kind of going oh like oh staff like what are you going to do and i'm just because they're at university and i was like finding myself so i think it definitely stems back to when I was younger and and leaving school and, and not having that exact path um, mm. and not feeling, yeah, maybe not good enough at school and stuff. That probably stays with me a little bit now. And that imposter syndrome of like, have I done enough? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably, yeah, mm. the insecurity that um, obviously like it's not, huge and yeah but that's something that yeah definitely like dwells over me but again i just you know try and have those little conversations and stuff of it well you're like the mu most beautiful person i've seen I or know, met that's ridiculous. and you are like i just love your energy and how you've just explained your journey of how you've just been so fearless i feel like i i've learned loads from you, are you and gonna, i'm sure you're gonna embrace the fear and <laughs> you know i just really need to get on with it don't i mm, i just need to do it i can't percent it's gonna it's gonna work <laughs> I need to do it, but let's see after this podcast. Will I do it? Will I not? I know. That'll be truth or dare. Comment, yeah, truth, truth or dare. <laughs> I yeah, pick exactly. truth. Comment below. Is this YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, if you think she should just go for it. Tell me, guys. There we go. Thank you so much. Thank you. I haven't looked at that camera once. That's fine. Oh, thank you very much. You're so welcome. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Wherever you're listening or watching, if you could press the like, follow and subscribe button, it would mean the world to me.